Hi, everybody, and welcome along to another episode of LESA Conference Television. I'm Colm Cronin from the Adventures in Advising podcast, and today I am delighted to be joined by uh, a stalwart of advising, the inimitable Oscar. Oscar, how are you doing today? I'm good, Colm. How are you? It's really nice to see you again. How are you? It's good. I love the fact that I get the opportunity to catch up with you uh, at these uh, various events. And Oscar is always doing interesting things. But for viewers who mightn't be so familiar with you, though I can't imagine there are many people watching this who, who don't know you, can do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're working and um, your work with LBSA as well? Yeah, so I'm, I'm working with the University of Maastricht with EdLab which is the Education Innovation Institute. And I joined that institute about four years ago. Um, and there we, we look at ways to innovate and, and continuously develop education um, as we do it in Maastricht. Um, and one of the things that I'm focusing on there really is bringing notions like mentoring and advising sort of closing, closer to the curriculum. We're looking for ways to do that, to not make it some kind of remote sort of side thing, but something that's really connected to how students learn and, and, and what, they, what they study. And before I came to, uh, to EdLab, I was with the University College of Maastricht for a long time, where I taught uh, humanities, but I also coordinated academic advising. And that is really sort of, that has been sort of the beginning of my, my connection with, with advising, um, which brought me into contact with a few really great organizations, sort of one of them obviously being LVSA that I sort of joined. I have to admit only after we um, organized a conference on advising in Maastricht in 2013, an international conference, uh, but I've been active there. I've been on the board um, with LVSA and I'm currently um, in a working group that is looking for ways to, to nurture and develop new contacts with, um, with colleagues abroad. Um, so that is also really interesting now in the context of the UCAT and LVSR conferences happening at the same time, by coincidence, but a beautiful coincidence. Um, and I've, I've been active in NACADA, the Global Community for Academic Advising, um, which was relevant for me because in Maastricht, we used a, a ter the type of advising that was much more sort of similar to advising as it happens in the United States than maybe study advising in the Netherlands. But um, yeah, just as in that sort of little bit of personal history, I like the fact that, that again, now with the two conferences, we have yet another organization, UCAT, sort of, um, where I'm also sort of a little bit involved, um, but representing yet another type of advising or tutoring or personal tutoring, as they would say in the UK, um, so, yeah, the opportunity to do things together to enrich the perspectives we all have on what it means to advise students. I mean, that's actually a really big word. So I think that's always great. So, um, yeah, and that's, that's also the, one of the main sort of driving forces um, has always been for me to be able to see those differences and how they lead to new stuff, new ideas. I think a, a modest summation of uh, your career there, Oscar. I, I would see you as the Marco Van Basten of uh, the, <laughs> the the Dutch uh, ac ac academic advising world. You know, with uh, with with a myriad of talents, but of course supported by a fantastic team around you yeah. um, at, at at an institutional level, but also. Uh, with LVSA and can you know this conference is obviously a little bit different this year with things being online but can you talk yeah. to me uh, I suppose a little bit about like that experience um, and a little bit in, the way in which I suppose people are you know it, it sounds from talking to to Eris and others over the the last few days that mm -hmm. there's been a lot of input from members into the conference. Yes and and yeah, the, the interesting thing about the conference as it is now is, is that it is sort of new in two ways. And uh, one is that we are doing this all online. Uh, the, the, the original idea was to have this conference a year ago in Maastricht. Um, and obviously we couldn't. And then, you know, these were the days that we all thought this will blow over in a couple of months and we'll just do it sort of next spring. And then in the fall, it, it became quite obvious that 
that was not very likely either. So then we had to decide to do this online, um, which comes with the obvious challenges. I mean, one of the great things, and this goes for UCAT and NACAR and LVSA, and I think any professional organization of having a conference is that you run into colleagues and that you meet with them and, and chat with them. And that um, also, if you diligently follow all the, the sessions, sort of the, the magic usually happens in between sessions and when you also when you have the opportunity to process ideas that you just saw uh with others so you, you you and 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 it's just nice to be with people who do what you do where you don't have to explain or defend yourself you can just re refer to things that they understand and, and all of that usually happens in the physical space of a conference and, and none of that is there so that that was one challenge and the other thing was that we decided, I think also, to be honest, a little bit inspired by the example of Nakada and, and UCAT, that we wanted to create many more opportunities for members to present. To um, ev Everyone does interesting things uh, in, in sort of in a thousand different ways um, that they are proud of, that they are, think are relevant and could be relevant to others. <clears throat> but there aren't that many opportunities to share that beyond your immediate circle of colleagues. So. Um, LVSI has for many years organized what we called study days uh, where we would ask uh, professionals from the field or relevant to the field to offer workshops um, which were very successful. I mean our, our members really enjoyed it but this element of asking members what is it that you would like to share that you would like to present um, is it was was a new sort of insight that that could be could be useful. And um, there was a conference in Groningen, in the north of the country, now three years ago, where we did a little bit of that with posters and stuff, and people really liked that. So we thought, okay, let's take the next step and make this a proposal-driven conference, uh, which it is now. Um, <clears throat> but I, I can imagine that um, even though study advisors like folk usually, um, presenting in a setting like this, is is quite something else and not everyone may have done this very often yet and now it also needs to happen online um so it's it was a bit two interesting challenges for lvsr also uh, yeah we, we 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 also sort of when we decided to move to this model we thought okay what's going to happen are we going to have proposals at all <clears throat> and fortunately we got many really great proposals so um but it's all, and then, okay, how do we do this whole online thing? And others have also already talked about not just using Zoom, but also um, the advising hub on the on the Gather Town uh, platform, which um, we really hope people will attend because even though we also see it's two dimensional, it's not the same, it doesn't come with the smell of coffee, um, but it it is as close as being together, uh, I think, as you as you can be right now. So. Um, so those were challenges for us, but but I think it's also challenging for many of the presenters. They have to to do this thing of yeah, sort of. You're always a bit vulnerable when you're presenting, um, and and particularly when it is, um, you know, this is you're amongst professionals, which on the one hand is the one thing that really connects you, but it's different than explaining a certain procedure to a group of students. Um, the critical questions that students may come up with will probably be of a, an entirely different nature than potential critical questions, even if they're constructive, that your fellow colleagues from other universities may come up with. So, um, yeah, that's new, that's challenging, and then you need to look at that camera all the time and, 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 and deal with the fact that people shut off their cameras and you're looking at names instead of people, uh, which we hope, by the way, everyone, that you will not, that you will switch on your camera. Um, but yes, so that's those are two new things about the conference. Um, but I also think it's it's going to be a lot of fun, to be honest. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, I've I've no doubt with some of the people involved, it will be a lot of fun. And I'm going to ask you maybe for some of the things that you're looking forward to. I'll give you a, a moment to uh, you know uh, mull over that, and uh, I will also give you what I'm looking forward to. But why before we we jump into that, just to to let viewers know. 
that um, there is a LinkedIn group that uh, they can join and it is uh, a joint LinkedIn group to chat with people from Netherlands, the UK and elsewhere. And you can also see that there has been a Twitter profile developed. You can see the conference hashtag. Um, so do get involved um, if you are active on social media and keep the conversations going. And then, Oscar, if I was to ask you for just some of the things, I, a sprinkling, I know there are mm -hmm. a, a myriad of things going to be happening, but a sprinkling of some of the things you might be looking forward yeah. to over the next few days. Well, I already mentioned GatherTown or the Advising Hub. I really hope uh, to be running into many colleagues there and that many people will visit. The, the nice thing about the program, when you look at the sessions, is it's really diverse. So there are many things that really have to do with competencies and skills, particular sort of focus, focus on having sort of meaningful coaching conversations with students, awareness of the needs of specific sort of groups sort of within the student population. But what I really like about the, 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 the conference program is, and, and all of this submitted also by members, there is a lot that is asking questions about the profession. Sort of what what is advising about? Why should we, um, or, or how can we make it more sort of visible and relevant? But also, what what does it mean to to do advising and to do it well? Um, can we measure it? Uh, can we, um, on the basis of how we evaluate our own profession, also make a case for it? So, it's it's both about sort of personal development and growth as an advisor, but there are many sessions also about um, advising as a profession. So, I, and I think that's very important because, it, sort of, and, and I think we've talked about this before, Colin, um, there is a, there's a huge demand now, sort of by institutions and students to address issues that have to do with stress and well-being and things like that. And that there's an automatic reaction to say, okay, well, that's what advising is for. Um, and on the one hand, yes, we can play a role. On the other hand, we cannot sort of supposed to be sort of the group um, or the office that resolves issues that may arise somewhere else, like for instance, in the curriculum or in, in university procedures. So making a stance of this is what we're about and this is what we're not about, and this is what should be taken care of elsewhere, I think that's important. So that's why I like that there are many sessions that have to do with the nature of the profession. Um, what I also think really is a fun part of the program is that we have a few sessions for which you have to sign up. There's no additional cost, but there's limited capacity. Having to do with improvisation theater online, um, team building online, all of this done by improvisation by Vera van Berlo, who is, who is great at that. Um, and, and team building, Iris Burks and Ari van der Lucht of Maastricht University, who are sort of, sort of the, the perfect people to get people excited about that kind of thing. There are in, what we call intervisi. So there is, it's hard, hard to translate. I think it's something like practice analysis, but simply sitting down with colleagues and discussing cases. So they're it, really in the, in, the, in the privacy of being together with a small group conducted by André Baers, who is, um, he's, he's very well known. He's, he's done the first LVSR webinar on, on the, co the impact of COVID and advising during COVID. He is also the, um, you would say the, um, the guardian of the LVSR course program and has done that for many years. So, and uh, but now he is doing these intervisi sessions. Um, you can still sign up uh, as we speak now. At least there are a few a few spots left. So I would encourage people to do that. Another thing that I, I I really like is that we will have a few sessions and opportunities together with UCAT. Um, so David David Gray. Um, and I will be presenting um, also on the nature of, of the profession. Um, the, the team building, one of the team building sessions that we host uh, is also open to, uh, to UCAT members and will be in English. And there will be, which is sort of not an LVSA event, but there will be um, an LVSA element in the UCAT awards ceremony, um, uh, which has to do with the fact that um, in honor of Charlie Nutt, the, uh, the executive director of NACADA, and I think here we are talking about sort of a real icon and um, sort of probably the Johan Cruyff of um, <laughs> academic advisor. I was going to say a perfect um, analogy. Um, so in his, in his, in his, to honor him, Yuka and Elvisa have created an award 
um, that will be sort of introduced during the award ceremony and also sort of sort of be given to someone. Um, and I, I, I don't think I should reveal the name yet of that person. Um, but, and the idea is that we want to acknowledge the work that I would say ordinary advisors, so not people who have been given the assignment to work on international relations. There aren't that many in advising anyways yet, but uh, international relations between advisors, but someone who as part of their regular day job or and in the evening hours has gone out of their way to promote collaboration, interaction between advisors or tutors or mentors or whatever name sort of they use across the globe. And, and I think, yeah, I see that as one of the highlights. It will only be a small, small part of the award ceremony, but I would encourage uh, also many of our LVSM members to attend uh, that, that ceremony. So those are, those are a few things that come up when you ask that question. Well, there is so much to look forward yep. to. And now that you have said that, um, I do hope to speak to Charlie uh, for the conference TV over the next few days. I might ask him if he can demonstrate a Cruyff turn uh, for me uh, <laughs> on screen. Uh, also, um, if, if uh, you will indulge me a moment, uh, you're, the, you, know, you have such wonderful insights. And for any viewers who want to hear more about Oscar's thoughts, I had the very good fortune of speaking to Oscar in depth on the Adventures in Advising podcast, episode 18. Find it wherever you get your podcasts. So if you listen to podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and we talk for nearly an hour and it's a really wonderful conversation. But in terms of other things that I am looking forward to, and there's so much packed into the next few days, but uh, the thing that I, I, I'm really interested to see is what what you will doodle on this occasion, Oscar, because <laughs> <laughs> the last time we spoke, Oscar's doodling led to the creation of a lunar lander. And I still tell people about this because uh, it, it was quite a quite a, a, a feat that you, it was really intricate and these little parts and Oscar managed to, to put it all together. So I look forward to seeing what Oscar has created at the end of uh, the conference. I, yeah, I just don't set your hopes too high. Sort of over the last few days when they had sort of Zoom calls, actually, you know, it's going downhill. I've been gradually tearing apart this little guitar pick. So that's that's where I'm at now. So, <laughs> well, well, maybe we could get you yourself and uh, David Gray and, uh, you know, we could do, uh, you know, a, a transnational, uh, you know, session, perhaps yeah. that, uh, you know, for, uh, a, a, a jam session. Maybe that's what we need to do at, at these online, you know, conferences where we can have a, a you know, a, an advising band from from around the world. But yes, a, an idea for for the future, perhaps. There is so much to look forward to. So again, um, do check out the, the website, do check out the conference schedule. As Oscar pointed out, there are some um, sessions that you have to sign up in advance for. So make sure if you're interested in those sessions, then they sound uh, really interesting. Please do sign up. And all that remains at this point is for me to say thank you very much, Oscar, to wish you all the best and the team uh, all okay. the best for the coming days. I'm sure it will be fantastic. And I look forward to speaking to you again in the not too distant future. So do I. And listen to the advising podcast, people. Not just mine, but all of them. They're great. <laughs> Thanks, Oscar.